Good morning students, this is Latif sir. In this video I will discuss about S block elements. This is the chapter 10 of class 11th chemistry. S block elements that is alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. Reduced syllabus I have given here. You can see these following uh, points or topics you have to read from this chapter. Okay. So I am making this video based on reduced syllabus only. Okay. So S block elements that is group 1 and group 2 elements of periodic tables that is alkali metals group 1 elements are also known as alkali metals and alkaline earth metal these are known as s block elements because for these elements the last electron last electron enters into the s orbital okay so s block elements group 2 uh, group 1 and group 2 first group 1 elements that is alkali metals group 1 element that is alkali metals and the alkali metals are lithium sodium potassium li, uh, potassium rubidium cesium and francium these are group 1 elements given here lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium these are group 1 elements and their electronic configuration also given uh, we can see in the last s orbital only one electrons are there in each element okay one electron in the last uh, last s orbital so that uh, common or general electronic configuration of uh, s block element is ns1 that is one electron in last or outermost s orbital one electron in outermost s orbital okay so <coughs> elements and their electronic configuration is also given here huh. and now the variation or in properties of s block elements first atomic and ionic radii you know that you have already studied in class 10 that is down the group down the group size of the element increases so size of or uh, or ionic or atomic radius of these elements generally increases from top to bottom okay ionic radius both ionic radius and uh, and atomic radius both increases from top to bottom as we go down the group okay that is from lithium to cesium atomic and ionic uh, radii increases second periodic uh, property is ionization energy ionization energy you know with uh, down this di down the group ionization energy of the element generally decreases because down the group size increases and force of attraction between the nucleus and outermost cell decreases therefore therefore ionization energy decreases from top to bottom okay so the ionization en en energy or enthalpy of the alkali metals are considerably low and decreases down the group from lithium to cesium and this is because this is because the effect of increasing size outweighs the increasing nuclear charge and the outermost electron is very well screened from the nuclear charge next is hydration enthalpy uh, hydration enthalpy means energy uh, released when a metal dissolve in water okay energy released and hydration enthalpy of alkali metals ion decreases with increasing in in ionic sizes so the most hydration energy maximum hydration energy produced for lithium and it is decreases from lithium ion to cesium ion okay and lithium has maximum degree of hydration due to uh, its very small size okay so lithium plus has maximum degree of hydration and for this reason lithium salts are mostly hydrated found in nature hydrated form in hydrated form because hydration energy of lithium plus ion is maximum it will it will release maximum amount of energy when it uh, when uh, compound of lithium dissolve in water okay <coughs> and physical properties physical properties all these are uh, metals alkali metals uh, they are soft very soft metal uh, light metals and because of large size these elements have very low density and density increases down the group from lithium to cesium remember that density of alkali metal increases uh, 
from lithium to cesium all these are very soft metal okay soft and light metal however potassium is lighter than sodium the melting and boiling point of alkali metals are low indicating weak melt, uh, metallic bonding due to the presence of only a single valence electron in them all the alkali metals have has one electron in its outermost shell okay so their valence is also one and alkali metals and their salts impart characteristic color to oxidizing flame and this is because heat uh, this is because the heat from the flame excites the outermost orbital electron to higher energy level and when excited electron comes back to the ground state there is there is emission of radiation in visible region okay and in the flame lithium so uh, the color of lithium it is crimson red sodium so yellow color potassium color of potassium is violet color of uh, lead as uh, color of rubidium is uh, red violet and cesium blue okay so in flame all these alkali metals so uh, some colors okay they uh, exhibit some color in the flame okay so alkali metals alkali metals and their salts impart characteristic color to to an oxidizing flame okay so color of lithium is lithium sodium yellow golden yellow it is actually golden yellow potassium is violet okay now reducing property <coughs> you know down the group size of the alkali metals increases so force of attraction between the nucleus and outermost electron decreases and therefore they can easily release our they can easily release the outermost cell electron that is why all the alkali metals are uh, reducing in nature okay they can so reducing property that is alkali metals are good reducing agent because they can easily release the outermost electron release uh, loss of electrons they can uh, they can easily release the electron okay so and lithium being the most and sodium least powerful reducing agent <clears throat> now see uh, some uh, compounds of sodium group 1 elements alkali alkali metals some compounds you have to read about some uh, important compounds of group 1 elements and group 2 elements also so uh, sodium important compound of sodium sodium carbonate which is also known as washing soda na2co3 dot tnh2 it is sodium carbonate or washing soda washing soda na2co3 its preparation is given in the syllabus you have to uh, read the preparation okay washing soda chemical reaction is also given uh, you can prepare washing soda from ammonia solution that is brine solution carbon dioxide okay when ammonia react with ammonia solution reacts with carbon dioxide it will produce ammonium carbonate and this ammonium carbonate reacts with water and carbon dioxide to gives ammonium bicarbonate ammonium bicarbonate when reacts with sodium chloride solution it will produce ammonium chloride and sodium carbonate okay and this process is known as solve process of preparation of sodium carbonate ha huh, solve process from by brine solution ammonia and carbon dioxide when brine solution means nacl solution is also known as brine solution reacts with um, uh, carbon dioxide ammonia okay it will produce sodium hydrogen carbonate okay and after formation of sodium hydrogen carbonate if you heat sodium hydrogen carbonate it will be converted in, uh, into sodium carbonate na2co3 okay so preparation of na2co3 na2co3 washing soda is given in the syllabus properties is not given and use of sodium uh, use of sodium bicarbonate that is washing soda na2co3.tnh2 is given in the syllabus use it is used 
in water softening uh, and cleaning it is also used in manufacture of glass okay it is also used in manufacture of soap borax caustic soda it is used in paper paint textile okay so this use you have to read use of uh, washing soda second compound of sodium is sodium chloride nacl nacl okay sodium chloride the most of most abundant so, uh, source of sodium chloride is sea water which contain 2.7 to 2.9 percent by mass of the salt sodium chloride use you have to read use is given in the syllabus it is used as a common salt or table salt and it is used for preparation of sodium uh, carbonate sodium hydroxide okay next compound of sodium is sodium hydroxide or caustic soda NaOH sodium hydroxide it is also known as caustic soda sodium hydroxide huh. sodium hydroxide is generally prepared uh, by electrolysis of sodium chloride you can prepare sodium hydroxide by electrolysis of sodium uh, sodium chloride in Kastner Kellner cell so in Kastner Kellner cell <coughs> using the uh, concept of electrolysis by uh, electrolysis of sodium chloride you can prepare sodium hydroxide in Kastner Kellner cell this is the electrolysis method okay when sodium chloride is electrolysis uh, is carried out of sodium chloride you will get sodium sodium hydroxide you will get finally so cathode reaction will be Na plus plus one electron to Na sodium and anode at anode you will get chlorine gas okay the amalgam is treated with water to give sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas so finally at first at cathode you will get sodium amalgam okay and this sodium amalgam then react with water to give sodium hydroxide now see use of sodium hydroxide it is used in manufacture of soap artificial silk uh, in purification of bauxite in textile industry these are some use of sodium hydroxide so you can prepare sodium hydroxide from sodium chloride in Kastner Keller cell uh, using the concept of electrolysis okay at cathode sodium amalgam is first sodium amalgam is formed in this sodium amalgam reacts with water to give sodium hydroxide <coughs> then sodium hydrogen carbonate baking soda NaHCO3 it is also known as baking soda okay <coughs> baking soda washing soda baking soda both you have to read baking soda NaHCO3 it is obtained from sodium carbonate when sodium carbonate Na2CO3 reacts with water and carbon dioxide it will produce sodium hydrogen carbonate okay so sodium hydrogen carbonate is made uh, is made by saturating a solution of sodium carbonate with carbon dioxide the white crystalline powder of sodium hydrogen carbonate being less soluble gets separated out okay so you can prepare sodium hydrogen carbonate that is washing soda like baking soda you can prepare baking soda that is NaHCO3 from sodium carbonate when sodium carbonate solution reacts with carbon dioxide and <coughs> sodium carbo hydrogen carbonate baking soda is used in uh, is is a mild antiseptic for skin infection and it, it is used in fire extinguisher <coughs> now see biological importance of sodium and potassium there are uh, very important role of sodium plus and <coughs> and potassium are, potassium in our body system okay this is the this is known as biological importance okay biological importance of sodium and potassium <coughs> sodium ions are found primarily on the outside of the cell and being located in the blood plasma and in the inter uh, interstitial fluid which sur surrounds the cell and these ions participate in the transmission of nervous sig nerve signal very important role of sodium uh, <coughs> sodium ions participate in the transmission of nerve signal remember that 
in regulating flow of water across the cell membrane so balance of water in our body system also controlled by sodium ion okay so flow of water across the cell also regulate sodium ion and in the transport of sugar amino acid into the cell all these are controlled or regulates by sodium and sodium and potassium although so similar chemically differ quantitatively in their ability to penetrate cell membrane in their transport mechanism and their efficiency to active enzymes thus potassium ions are most abundant cations within cell fluid where they activate many enzymes participate in oxidation of glucose to produce atp and with sodium are responsible for transmission of nerve sig nerve signal okay so these are biological importance of sodium and potassium and now see next uh, compound is sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate is na2 s h2o3 it is given its preparation is given sodium thiosulfate from sodium sulfide sodium sulfide is na2 so3 na2 so3 is known as sodium sulfide you can prepare sodium thiosulfate from sodium sulfide when sodium sulfide reacts with sulfur it will produce sodium thiosulfate na2 h2o3 it is given in the syllabus sodium thiosulfate na2 h2o3 preparation from sodium sulfide when sodium sulfide react with sulfur it will produce sodium thiosulfate na2h2o3 now see reaction of sodium thiosulfate with silver nitrate when sodium thiosulfate reacts with uh, sil silver nitrate solution you will get silver thiosulfate precipitate of silver thiosulfate precipitate of silver thiosulfate and sodium nitrate okay so you will get a precipitate of silver thiosulfate and this silver thiosulfate turn uh, black due to reduction okay uh, due to due to this reduction and silver thiosulfate when re, uh, reacts with water it will form silver sulfide and and h2o4 and now see reaction of silver thiosulfate with uh, uh, sodium uh, sodium thiosulfate with iodine when sodium thiosulfate reacts with iodine it will form sodium iodide and sodium tetrathionate na2s4o6 so na2s2o3 plus iodine to give nai sodium iodide and na2s2o4 sodium tetrathionate okay so sodium thiosulfate react with iodine to make sodium iodide and sodium tetrathionate both the compounds are colorless so the violet color of iodine disappear during this reaction uh, iodine is violet color okay and sodium thiosulfate reacts with hcl to give sodium chloride sulfur and sulfur dioxide and water okay so sodium thiosulfate decomposes when treated with dilute acid dilute hydrochloric acid to give sulfur sulfur dioxide okay and this is known as clock reaction when sodium thiosulfate na2s2o3 reacts with hcl to give nacl sulfur plus so2 plus water now see use of sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate is used in several pharmaceutical preparation and also in various medical purposes and uh, medical properties uh, uh, and also has some med uh, medical properties also and it is an important antidote used for treating cyanide poisoning apart from its medical uses it is also has application in water treatment neutralizing bleach laser uh, tanning leather tanning gold extraction photographic processing okay so these are some use of sodium thiosulfate very important compound sodium thiosulfate and all this reaction are given in the syllabus okay now see next group 2 group 2 element alkaline earth metal similar to group 1 group 2 elements that is alkaline earth metal the elements are beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium and radium these are these elements elements are given here you can see and their electronic configuration also given okay all these group 2 elements has uh, two electron in its outermost s orbital okay so their common electronic configuration of 
group 2 element is NH2 and their valence is also 2 and common oxidation number is also 2 because 2 electron they can lose these 2 electron easily ok so the common oxidation state of group 2 elements is 2 ok so group 2 elements comprise beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium and radium and they are called alkaline earth metal and except beryllium except beryllium they are uh, all the other elements are known as alkaline earth metal and the first element ber beryllium of this group differ from the rest of the member and so diagonal relationship to aluminium electronic configuration their general electronic configuration of all the elements are given their symbols name now see atomic and ionic radii same to group one element okay similar to group one element that is down the group their atomic and ionic radii increases from beryllium to beryllium to radium okay ionized energy also change in ionized energy also same uh, similar that is down the group ionized energy decreases because size increases down the group okay so uh, the alkaline earth metal have low ionized energy due to fairly large size of the atom and since the uh, since the atomic size increases down the group their ionized enthalpy also decreases the first ionized enthalpy of alkaline earth metals are higher than those of of the corresponding group 1 metals that is uh, first ionized energy or, en energy or enthalpy of alkaline earth metals are higher than first ionized enthalpy of uh, alkali metals group 1 elements and this is due to their small size as compared to the corresponding alkali metals and oxidation state common oxidation of group 2 is plus 2 common oxidation and common oxidation state of group 1 elements is plus 1 ok remember that so all these uh, group 2 elements can form plus 2 uh, oxidation state more, uh, easily ok they can lose 2 electron so their common oxidation state is plus 2 and their uh, group 2 elements also can uh, ex uh, can uh, import some color in flame so color of calcium 2 plus uh, calcium or calcium 2 plus ion is brick, brick red color of strontium ion is uh, it is crimson color of barium is apple green color of radium is uh, carmine red okay and remember that beryllium and magnesium do not uh, import any color in the flame beryllium and magnesium except beryllium and magnesium all the other uh, alkaline earth metal uh, import some color in the flame okay, color of different elements given here you can see reducing properties similar to uh, group 1 element these elements alkaline earth metals also behave as reducing agent they can reduce other elements easily okay this is because they can easily release electrons so alkaline earth metal also act as reducing agent and now see some uh, like group 1 element you have to read about some important compounds of group uh, 2 elements that is uh, compounds of calcium uh, first compound is calcium oxide compound of calcium calcium oxide CaO and how it is formed when calcium carbonate CaCO3 is heated when CaCO3 is heated you will get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide ok so calcium oxide which is also known as quick lime CaO it is prepared on a commercial scale by heating limestone in a rotary uh, kiln at 1072 1270 Kelvin. Okay, now the reaction of calcium oxide, calcium oxide when react with water, it will produce calcium hydroxide, slick lime. Okay, when calcium oxide reacts with carbon dioxide, it will produce calcium carbonate. When calcium oxide reacts with silica, it will produce calcium silicate. Okay, so there is a common chemical properties of uh, calcium oxide, chemical properties, chemical reaction of calcium uh, oxide. Now see use of calcium oxide it is an important primary material for manufacturing cement and is cheapest form of all uh, form of alkali it is used in manufacture of sodium carbonate from caustic soda ok now the second compound is calcium hydroxide or slick lime it is obtained from calcium oxide ok when calcium oxide reacts with water it will produce calcium hydroxide quick lime to slick lime 
and uh, slick lime it is white amorphous powder it is sparingly soluble in water and the aqueous solution of uh, slick lime is known as lime water <coughs> now see reaction of calcium hydroxide with carbon dioxide when carbon dioxide is passed through lime water it turns milky due to the formation of calcium carbonate and on uh, on passing excess of carbon dioxide the precipitate of calcium carbonate dissolves to form calcium hydrogen carbonate the solution the milkiness of the solution become uh, transparent okay <clears throat> similarly when calcium hydroxide that is slake lime treated with chlorine you will get bleaching powder cacl2 plus caocl whole twice plus water this is bleaching powder caocl whole twice okay so you can get uh, bleaching powder from calcium hydroxide when calcium hydroxide reacts with chlorine now see use of calcium hydroxide it is given it is used in preparation or uh, it is used in the preparation of mortar a uh, building material uh, it is used in a white wash due to uh, disinfectant nature and it is also used calcium hydroxide also used in making glass okay and calcium carbonate calcium carbonate i have told already calcium carbonate is obtained from calcium hydroxide when react with carbon dioxide you will get calcium carbonate uh, calcium carbonate use of calcium carbonate also given it is used as a building material in the form of marble and manufacture of quick lime and calcium sulfate that is plaster of paris important compound of calcium plaster of paris caso4.2h2 okay so calcium carbonate uh, calcium ca uh, calcium sulfate that is plaster of paris caso4 that half h2 okay half h2 sorry so caso4 half h2 it is a, it is a hemi hydrated hydrate of calcium sulfate CSO4 half H2 and it is obtained when gypsum CSO4 dot 2H2 it is gypsum is heated to 393 Kelvin. So when gypsum is heated CSO4 dot 2H2 you will get calcium sulfate hemihydrate means plaster of Paris CSO4 half H2. Okay. So it use of calcium uh, plaster of Paris it is given. It is uh, the largest use of plaster of Paris in uh, in the building industry as well as plasters and it is used in uh, immobile immobilizing the affect affected part of organs where there is a bone th a fracture it is also employed in dentist okay so these are some common use of plaster of paris and last biological importance of calcium and magnesium similar to group one elements sodium and mag sodium and potassium okay all enzymes that utilize atp in for in phosphate transfer require magnesium as the cofactor <coughs> so here biological importance of magnesium is given you can read from this okay and this chapter completed thank you students